Grand Tour is an exhibition that revisits the 18th century's love of classicism and applies its fascination with antiquity to a 21st century context. The exhibition features four contemporary artists, Emily Allchurch, James B. Webster, Claire Partington, and Matt Smith. Emily Allchurch recreates old masters paintings through collages of her own photographs. Two of the works in this exhibition look specifically at Sir John Soane, the neoclassical architect and collector. The first, In Search of Soane, recreates a painting by Joseph Gandhi from 1818 that imagines all of Soane's buildings gathered together into one room. Emily has photographed each element first-hand. Pitshanger Manor, the Bank of England, the Sir John Soane Museum on Lincoln's Inn Fields, it builds up to create an imaginary maquette of an architect's achievements. The accompanying work takes the same approach, but with Gandhi's painting of Soane's unbuilt projects. For this, Emily travelled across the UK to photograph surviving neoclassical buildings. Ickworth House in Cambridgeshire, the Palladium Bridge at Prior Park, the Scottish National Gallery in Edinburgh. The cumulative effect is of an architectural utopia. James Webster's sculptures take imagery that is classically associated with power and uses the fragility of porcelain to suggest an inner world behind the hard facade. The Wrestlers does this through the image of Greco-Roman wrestling, that most manly of classical pursuits. Two figures intertwine in a knot of pressure, sinews tightly tensed. But counterbalancing this is its delicate scale. Notably, this work was developed in the COVID lockdown, and it articulates an experience that many confronted, of conflicted thoughts and emotions, and of grappling with oneself in isolation. A series of three portraits also captured this sense of an interior world. They take the idea of the classical bust, usually used to present emperors or men of power, and scale it down to a humble size. The combination of porcelain with concrete underlines the contrast between hard exterior and a more vulnerable inner world. Claire Partington's sculptures also draw on classical imagery to visualise contemporary themes from a historical perspective. This figure in black stoneware, Zoonotica, looks at the COVID pandemic. It combines early theories that the virus may have come from a pangolin with classical imagery of the Nano Morganti, a famous buffoon of the Medici court. The result is reminiscent of a child deity from antiquity spreading havoc as he tosses the virus in his hand. Claire has also reproduced the image as a motif on a series of ceramic plaques. These souvenirs of 2020 echo the kind of items that all grand tourists would have purchased on their travels. An accompanying figure combines the image of a 21st century woman with the motif of an Italianate Madonna as a patron saint or saviour. Black Madonnas are revered across Europe as protective icons and figures to turn to in times of trouble. But in Claire's figure, the power resides not in an ideal but in an everyday woman. She stands on a plinth where the virus is shown beneath a phoenix rising from the flames, while in her hand she holds a flower of hope. Matt Smith's artworks rework classical motifs to question how official versions of history are created. This exhibition features a group of wall sconces in the tradition of collectible ceramics, but using them as plinths to present unlikely combinations of objects. A dolphin with shells and swagging, parrots with plates, and an adaptation of a parasol shading a pair of women. Freestanding sculptures continue this theme of the traditional tinged with the unexpected. A pair of figures present the Grand Tourist and the Grand Tourest, a travelling couple adapted into candlesticks with platinum luster heads. A third sculpture presents an arrangement of their Grand Tour discoveries, elegant birds with gold-tipped beaks perched 
upon classical columns. His textile works use found pictures that are then interwoven with patterns and contemporary colour fields, as if the structures that define what is beautiful can be usurped and adapted to new ends.